One of the most common questions I get about art history is what are some of the good books to read, especially if you want to start learning about art history. One of the most common questions people have about works of art or art history is what is so special about this or that particular painting? Well, today I want to connect these two questions and talk about a book on art history and art appreciation that I really like. This book is called Art, The Way It Is by John Atkins Richardson. I got this book in a thrift bookstore in Berkeley, but I googled my local library and it has it there. So chances are you can find this book as well and I highly recommend it. Why do I like this book so much? Well, um, the author addresses a lot of really common questions that people have about art and helps people understand why this or that particular work is a good work of art and what is so special about it. The very first question that Richardson addresses in his book is what is art to begin with? For example, is this painting a work of art? Do you consider it art? Well, most people will say yes. Why? Because the things that are depicted in the painting and the way that the artist depicted them are really close to real life. Well, if that is how we evaluate art, then would a model airplane be a work of art? Would a photograph be a work of art? Or what makes a photograph so special and turns it into a work of art. He also gives some other examples of things that some people consider to be artworks and some people don't. For example, comic strips or Man Ray's indestructible objects. Or what about The Fountain by Marcel Duchamp? Anyway, after reading the first chapters of this book on art appreciation, I for myself understood that art is something, in a way, undefinable, but it is somewhere where skill meets creativity and meets deep meaning. Because after all, good art should evoke feelings, emotions, and thoughts. Okay, fine. If art is so hard to define, then how can we talk about works of art? And well, he says that art is pretty much undefinable. He gives really clear guidelines on how to look at the work of art because he really breaks it down into elements. Element number one. When you look at the work of art, look for line and form. For example, when you look at the painting or a sculpture or really um, any art object, what you can do is trace the lines in the picture with your eye. Chances are, together the lines form some sort of a shape. For example, in this, this, and this painting, you can very clearly see a triangle. Another thing is to look for whether there is a particular place where all the lines in the picture meet. In other words, what is in the center of this work of art? For example, in this painting and this painting, the main object of the painting in both pieces of the Last Supper is Jesus Christ. However, in one of the paintings, Jesus Christ is in the center of the painting. In the other one, he is not in the center. And you can see how the visual effect from the paintings changes because of that. Element number two, light and shade. Artists have a tendency to highlight the most important parts of the painting and leave the less important pieces in the shade. Um, for example, Caravaggio and Rembrandt are some of the perfect examples of how artists do that. Check out these examples uh, to get the idea of how light and shade works in the paintings. Element number three is color. Everybody knows that different kinds of colors, shades of color, can evoke different feelings and emotions. You probably also heard of such terms as warm and cold colors. 
For example, in this painting, using warm colors, the artist makes us feel warm and comfy. This painting, on the other hand, with cold colors, feels cold and gloomy. Another way to look at color in the painting is to see um, how wide um, the artist's palette is. For example, if you look at these ancient Russian icons, you can see that the artist uses really bright colors. And in my mind, this helps us understand the beauty of God and the life that God created. On the other hand, uh, this painting by a 17th century Dutch artist also is about the beauty of life. However, notice the limited palette that the artist uses. In the way, uh, this artist points out that the things that are dear to our hearts and are really near us, while maybe are not as beautiful and bright, can be beautiful in their own way. The things I mentioned above are the things that you can look at in any painting and that will help you say something about the painting or see what makes it special even if you know absolutely nothing about it. But another thing that I really like about this painting is that uh, Richardson in depth talks about some important terms in art history, art criticism, and art appreciation that can also help you understand a little bit more about the works of art that you are looking at. For example, he talks about um, the composition, the formal composition of the painting, or perspective. He also discusses the theory of styles and talks about some of the major styles, such as neoclassicism, romanticism, impressionism, uh, some of the uh, contemporary styles, which is really helpful. Last but not least, um, Richardson really goes in depth uh, about some of the techniques that are involved in creating a work of art. For example, have you ever seen how an oil painting is made? Or for that matter, some more complicated media, such as, for example, sculpture or printmaking? Well, in this book, you can really get to understand the process of how it's done, and it can really help you appreciate these works of art even more. What do you think? Are you going to read this book after you have seen my review? Let me know in the comments. Thank you.